Stages in the Purification of Man First Bible Lesson, John 3.3 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say to thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Second Bible Lesson, Matthew 7.21 Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. Golden Text, John 14.26 But the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said to you. Every soul born of a woman is sinful. Beloved brethren, there is nobody the truth is hidden from. The time to preach the word of God in parables had long passed, because we are a lucky generation, and this is the end of time. Parables are for those who do not believe in God. But the children of the kingdom are spoken to in very clear terms. Nothing is hidden from them. This is what was written about them because it was said that the Comforter, which the Father shall send, would teach men everything. This is not the time for man to act according to the dictates of the flesh. This is not the time for people to claim anything as exclusively theirs and to behave according to their traditions. This is the reason why the first lesson states thus, Except a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. Except we refrain from the traditions and doctrines of our forefathers and embrace the new teachings of the Father, we would not be saved. Our forefathers believed in the law of Moses that says, An eye for an eye. They believed in concoction. They killed people and indulged in all sorts of atrocious acts. Since this is a new world, we are expected to live a new life. The Holy Spirit has personally come to teach man all things. Therefore, we must relinquish our former lifestyles. You are all aware of the fact that a new cloth cannot be used to patch an old one, neither can new wine be put into an old wineskin. Therefore, the life people live is not in consonance with this new teachings. The old lifestyles we had have nothing in common with the new life and teachings of the kingdom of God, because the scripture states that the blind cannot lead the blind. This is the fullness of time, as Christ has said, that a time is coming, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship God in spirit and in truth. This is the end of time. The time of stupidity has passed. The promised Comforter has finally arrived to teach us everything and lead man to the accurate knowledge of the truth. He has taught us not to drink, fornicate, fight, or quarrel. He has not come to teach us how to wage war with each other, but has come to teach us the new ways of life. The Effects of Western Civilization It is a fact that before the coming of the whites to Africa, Africans behaved in unwholesome ways. However, when they brought their civilized culture, we gradually changed from our old ways and embraced it. Anybody who failed to go to school was seen as one who could not distinguish his left from right. Today, one who is educated is seen as one who knows exactly what to do. When you go to school, you are regarded as a civilized person, but the people see one who has not gone to school at all as primitive in all aspects of life, because his perception of life would be negative and primitive. In effect, this does not mean that before the coming of the whites, our forefathers did not have their own culture. Actually, they had, but it did not give glory to God. Such practice as the killing of twins and their mothers and all sorts of rituals took place in this part of the world before the coming of the whites. Giving birth to twins was regarded as an abomination, and for that reason, mothers of twins and their babies were killed, and in some communities they were regarded as outcast. The natives saw this obnoxious culture, killing of twins, as normal and not evil. The slave trade was another practice that was seen as normal before the advent of the whites. The cutting of human heads was never regarded as anything evil. Rather, it was regarded as an act of bravery and glory. Anybody who was found with a human head was always held in high esteem. Another practice which was quite common was idol worship. People had their various gods and shrines, and this practice was regarded as a priority. Polygamy was another practice upheld by the people as a mark of dignity. The society saw men who had many wives as being great and held them in high esteem. The people did not toy with necromancers and regarded them as gods. They would often comply immediately whenever a necromancer, a native doctor, ordered that something should be done. 
I am using earthly situations to illustrate heavenly things. The people then did not see anything evil in all the ancient practices mentioned here. Such practice were regarded as the right culture done and observed. However, when the whites came, they stopped the killing of twins and their mothers and put an end to the slave trade. They also helped to deliver the people from idol worship. So many other evil practices were either stopped completely or greatly reduced. In the same vein, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ was to bring to an end the culture that existed in the days of Moses. During the era of Moses, his teachings were based on the law of tit-for-tat, that is, an eye for an eye. Since this teaching was not pleasing to God, Christ came to put a stop to such practices by introducing an entirely new teaching based on love. Ignorance leads to doom. A popular maxim has it that learning has no end. Man is bound to learn new things as long as he lives. Learning is dynamic and progressive from one stage to another. Do not claim to be satisfied with the teachings you got from your forefathers or be satisfied with your present stage in life. This is what destroys the world. The type of culture handed down to you by your forefathers can never lead you anywhere. They, the people of old, did what they did in ignorance. They did not know the truth. This is why it is said, if the tree does not fall, the axe would not rest. Abraham used to go into the bush to offer sacrifices to God. I want you to realize that such a practice was only prevalent then and not now. The coming of Christ marked the end of the Mosaic culture. People in the era of Moses were ignorantly taught the old ways and they observed them ignorantly. They did not know the right path to follow. When Christ arrived, He put an end to such teachings. Christ Himself gave the assurance that He has other sheep outside which are not yet among His fold, and that it is time to bring them. He again said that when the Comforter shall come, He would teach and lead men to the accurate knowledge of the truth. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not lead man to the accurate knowledge of the truth. Hence, He bore eloquent testimony about the promised Comforter who has now come. The Father has come, sending no one. We would not encounter any problems if we practiced the true teachings of God. Besides, had men a good teacher right from the beginning, none would have gone astray. Do not lament or weep about the situation of things in the world today. This is because Rome was not built in a day. We shall gradually attain the accurate knowledge of the truth. This is that promised time. Therefore, abstain from the doctrines of your forefathers, because their doctrines led you to your present problems. The Significance of Circumcision Before Abraham, there was nothing like circumcision, and those persons who lived then lived freely and enjoyed their lives without thoughts of circumcision. There was no church or any law in the era of Abraham. They enjoyed themselves, not knowing that they were very far from God. It was during the days of Abraham that God introduced circumcision, and that was then regarded as baptism. That was the identification mark of a man of God. Abraham, Isaac, and the rest of the people started observing circumcision. However, nobody knew God as at then. The people regarded circumcision as their baptism and a mark of godliness. Moses and Purification during the time of Moses, all the firstborns were taken to a priest for purification with two pigeons and two doves. This marked another form of baptism as a mark of godliness. And if she shall not be able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for her and she shall be clean. Leviticus 12.8 In addition, Numbers 6.10 states, Thus, and on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. The Baptism of John The coming of John the Baptist marked a new turn of event. He introduced the baptism of water, which is by immersion. It was prophesied that the one endowed with the Holy Spirit during John's baptism was to baptize with fire and spirit. The prerequisite for receiving the baptism of John was the complete confession of one's sins. Thus, the baptism was for repentance and identifying he who was to come. This is the third type of baptism. John was the first person to administer the right type of baptism. This is because before then, the only known means of baptism was through circumcision and purification. 
people did not know that they still had a long way to go. In effect, the baptism of John was for people to know Christ and believe in Him, while the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ was purely for the remission of sins in order to acknowledge the existence of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the last witness of the Holy Spirit. If you repent of your sins and you are devoid of the Holy Spirit, you will not know the truth. Therefore, after the baptism of Christ, you would know the promised Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and the only Teacher to the world. You can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one that enables people to do the right thing. But without the Holy Spirit, you are deaf and dumb. This is why you are told that, except a man is born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. The Embodiment of Christ Christ is made of water, blood, and spirit. This is the last mission of the Holy Spirit. He has come to rule the world forever. Should you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will have to die because the flesh has nothing to offer man. The Muslims and other religious organizations behave the way they like. Men get married to many wives. Many indulge in the preparation of concoction, murder, stealing, and a fraud. If one reproves them of such wicked acts, they get angry. But our Lord Jesus Christ said that, Except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Christ condemned the house built by man. This is why he made the statement that, God does not dwell in a house built by man. This is because God is a spirit. He has come sending no one in this last era to teach and lead man to the accurate knowledge of the truth. This is the reason why I continue to say that this generation is the luckiest of all generations. Christ is the truth, and His words are true. John the Baptist, in Matthew 3.11, testified that, I indeed baptize you with water to repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now if baptism were not important, how would this same Jesus go to John the Baptist for baptism? Had he not received baptism, how would he have received the Holy Spirit? He would not have been able to achieve anything without the Holy Spirit. Man is sinful. Everyone born of a woman is sinful, and the only thing that can purify man is baptism. Sanctification comes to you after receiving baptism, and God will then dwell in you. No human being could have had any physical contact with the Holy Spirit had he descended from the blues. It is for the sake of establishing contact with man, in order to use man to accomplish his divine works on earth, that he indwells man after baptism and takes possession of his body. Re-examine the first lesson. First Bible Lesson, John 3, 3 Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say to thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Baptism for Sanctification Beloved, you are now aware of the truth that you cannot be sanctified without baptism. Flesh and blood cannot see God, no matter how long you fast and pray. If you are in the flesh, you are wasting your time and energy. Even if you embark on astral projection, God cannot be close to you because He knows that you are not clean. On the other hand, you cannot be allowed to get close to Him. Under such a situation, you cannot distinguish between good and evil. Thus you are lifeless. No evil person can see Him. Anybody who is evil is blind, despite the fact that his eyes are wide open. Although God is here in our midst, such a person cannot see Him because He is spiritually blind. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are here on earth, and the very moment you accept baptism, you will be able to see the Father. You will know what is good and evil. You will enter into His kingdom, and He will teach you all things. Most people like John the Baptist would not have known Christ but for baptism. John confirmed that he did not know Christ, but that he who sent him and instructed John to baptize with water revealed the Christ. It was through baptism that the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ knew Christ. In other words, had they not received baptism, they would not have known Him. When people claim that they cannot worship man but the true God, I laugh at them because they cannot see the God they are claiming to worship, since they have failed to fulfill the laid-down condition which is baptism. If you are not born again, you will not know that fornication, adultery, stealing, eating of fish and meat, fighting and other vices are abomination in the sight of God. 
you would also not know that God dwells in your body and that He is here on earth, that He is the cause and effect of everything on earth. You would never attribute whatever happens in the world to God. Rather, you would always attribute every event to evil forces. You would always claim that you knew God right from your birth, but despite this claim, it will be discovered that you are eating human meat and committing all sorts of atrocious acts. Even right now, without receiving baptism, you would ask what the Father is saying because you lack understanding. You would often claim that you are a true man of God and that you have taken the Holy Communion. The prophets prophesied that the Most High God does not dwell in a house built by man. Therefore, without receiving baptism, you can never know that you are the temple of God and that God is on earth with man. You would not also know that the dwelling place of God is here on earth and that He is the one teaching you everything with the Spirit of God. If you come across anybody who says that he is a child of God and that God is man, you would be provoked to the extent of asking for the head of the person because of your ignorance. However, the moment you repent and receive baptism, you would realize that you are a child of God and you will see God. He would then teach you all the things which you did not know, and you will know all things. Beloved, so long as you refuse to repent, you would never believe that there is nothing like juju, charms, witchcraft, mermaid, and the ineffective things you continuously believe in. You would never believe that the only thing in existence is the Almighty God. God departed from Adam and Eve because of their disobedience. They, because of this, became ignorant in their last days, and that was the genesis of man's suffering. From then on, God did not lead them since they had failed woefully, because man lived according to his own volition. Had man obeyed God, his Creator, he would have taught and led him. Invariably, man would not have suffered at all. This is man's last chance. Through the coming of Christ to unite the entire world, God has come in this last era to teach and lead man to the accurate knowledge of the truth. This is why 1 Corinthians tells you that this generation is the luckiest of all generations. This is the reign of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The present problems facing man is as a result of man's refusal to repent completely from sins. However, with time, the Father will do His will, and no single person shall perish except the child of perdition. Re-examine the second lesson. Second Bible Lesson, Matthew 7, 21 Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. The Significance of Baptism do you understand what is nominated in the above text? That lesson says that it is not he that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of the Father. It is also written that two persons shall lie on a mat, and one shall be taken, leaving the other behind, and that two persons shall go to the mill to grind maize. One shall be taken away from the other. Whoever does the will of the Father is he who repents, receives baptism, and then receives the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will then lead and guide him. Irrespective of the fact that you and such a person are sharing the same room, the person shall be identified as a child of God because he has surrendered himself to the directives of the Holy Spirit. When our Lord Jesus Christ said, Before Abraham I was, the people regarded him as a demented fellow because by his age he was not even up to fifty years. When the people told him that they were the sons of Abraham, Christ on his part told them that Abraham was desirous to see his era, and he saw it and was glad. Christ again told them that if they were the true sons of Abraham, they would believe and obey him. The coming of God was foretold right from Genesis to the advent of Christ. If you read the book of Joel, you will discover where it was prophesied that the Holy Spirit would come in the last days. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Joel 2.28 Christ and John the Divine also prophesied about the coming of the promised Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if you refuse to receive Him and adhere to His teachings, it means that you are not His child. You can now see why He said that, It is not those who call me Lord, Lord, that shall enter into the kingdom of God but those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. 
Those who keep the commandment of God are those who have repented of their sins and believe in God. They are those taught by God and are endowed with the Holy Spirit. These persons shall inherit the kingdom of God. Christ told the people that He was reminding them of these things so that when they would happen, they would recognize Him as the person spoken of. When men shall kill you in the name of serving God, they shall do these things to you because they know neither the Father nor the Son. Now, do you think that those who kill and persecute the children of God know God at all? Do you believe such persons will enter the kingdom of God? Do you think that those who build their houses with gold, those who smoke and drink alcohol, the fornicators, and persecutors of the children of God know God? Do you think that the polygamists, juju worshippers, and those who keep shouting the name of Jesus and Jehovah are children of God? Such are the people who call Him Lord, Lord, without doing the will of God, and they will not enter into the kingdom of God. Those who are to inherit the kingdom of God are those who have repented of their evil deeds and keep the injunctions of God. You who claim to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, why have you refused to practice His injunctions? He is the last prophet, because Moses said that in the last days, God would raise a prophet amongst you who would resemble Him, and that all those who would not hear His voice would be eliminated from the face of the earth. Christ is the light of the world. Have you not read what is written in Matthew 5.17? Thus, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. That was the last duty Christ achieved to pave way for God to finally come and reign eternally. Moses did not attain perfection. That was why he said that God will raise another prophet who the people should obey and all those who refuse to obey him will be destroyed. John in Matthew 3.11 said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He never claimed perfection. Christ also said in John 16.12-13 thus, I have yet many things to say to you, but ye cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak from himself, but whatever he shall hear, that will he speak, and he will show you things to come. You can now see why Christ said that he is the way, the truth, and the light. It is a fact, because without him, none would come to the Father. No man would see God or know his ways. Hitherto, when one claimed that he had seen God, he would be stoned to death. However, in recent times, those who believe and repent of their sins are endowed with the Spirit of the Comforter to teach and lead them to the accurate knowledge of the truth. The old teachings which man received were of no benefit to him, but since the Comforter has come, the truth has been revealed to man. Consequently, those who cannot appreciate this truth are still doing what is not pleasing in the sight of God. The works of the flesh ended in the era Christ. He is the last sacrificial lamb. Therefore, none is expected to perform any ritual of any sort again. When he said, It is finished, all the works of the flesh and darkness ended. After then came the Comforter, and all those who receive his teachings are saved. But all those who refuse his teachings have perished, just like those of old. Christ told the Samaritan woman that a time is coming when man shall neither worship God on the mountain nor in Jerusalem, and that the true worshippers of God would worship him in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks for such to worship him. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem, worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what, we know what we worship, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 20-24 Unfortunately, people are still going to Jerusalem, Rome, Mecca, and other places to worship God. Those who do that are the children of perdition. Realize that this is the time for man to worship God in truth by surrendering his body to Him. Man is the temple of God. But if you inform people about this, some would stone you to death or resort to calling you different names. 
re-examine the Golden Text. Golden Text, John 14, 26 But the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said to you. The Work of Christ Revealed Beloved, are you aware of the fact that one man cannot do this work? Christ has accomplished His own task by shedding His precious blood for man and revealing God to us. After that, He departed and declared openly to the people that whoever blasphemes against the Son of Man shall be forgiven, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven in this generation and in the generation to come. And whoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Matthew 12, 32 God has now come Himself. He is the Comforter, but people are still gazing into the sky, expecting God to crash land. He has come to reign eternally. If someone directs you with claims that he has seen Christ, do not believe or follow him, for the Comforter has come himself. He has come to teach and lead man to the accurate knowledge of the truth. It was written that he should teach and fulfill his covenant with man. Christ said that the Comforter, even the Holy Spirit whom the Father shall send in his name, should teach man all things. Therefore he has taught us love, oneness, humility, mercy, and all virtues. He makes us know that there is nothing like juju, mermaid, and witchcraft, but warns us against committing any sinful act. He also advises us not to marry more than one wife. Furthermore, He has assured us that soon people will come to the realization that those who are counted worthy to inherit the kingdom of God neither marry nor are they given in marriage. He has not come to teach us anything concerning Nigeria alone, but the whole world. He has not come to teach us to continue living according to the dictates of the flesh, to kill, steal, or search for protective charms, but to live a righteous life devoid of sinful acts. He has come to teach us the truth. He has united the whole world. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in Matthew 5, 8, says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Purify yourself that you may see God. Whenever your heart is pure, you will see God. God said, Let us make man in our own image. Yet people still believe that there is no God, and that God has no children. But they do not realize that He is here on earth with man. He is the Father and we are His children. All the things that Christ taught are now brought to our remembrance. He warned that we should not drink, fornicate, hate, or cause division. He also enjoined us to go from house to house and preach the word of God, for we are all the children of God and He is our Father. In times past, idolatry, deceit, murder, and other sinful acts were not considered evil, but our eyes are now open. We have realized that all those were demonic acts. Heaven, earth, and the fullness therein belong to God. Know that His entire creation is one. We are all one. We should therefore live according to God's injunctions. God is now on earth teaching man Himself. Whoever listens and practices His injunctions would not have problems. He guides and directs you at all times. We are free. The whole world looks at us with surprise. People wonder as to the source of the power in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. It baffles them to see people stained for years without any medical treatment, yet not having problems of any kind. In the Western world and other parts of the world, people go into researching in the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, yet I cannot say exactly what is the result of their research. The Scripture states that, They which shall be counted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Luke 20, 35-36 the Father has confirmed all that Christ said, and all have come to fulfillment. It was said that the children of God would be arrayed in white and would sing before the throne of God day and night unceasingly. Are you today not a witness to the fulfillment of these teachings? It is said that no man shall teach you, for there is only one teacher, and that is the Holy Spirit. The whole world does not know God, only the children of God know Him. He indwells them and teaches them His ways. The people of the world wonder why members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star attend services daily, and not only on Sundays as they do. 
They are also surprised that we spend longer time during service than any other church. Taught by God unto Salvation Everything about Brotherhood of the Cross and Star baffles the world. This is because it is the kingdom of God, and we are dealing directly with God. If not for the fact that God is physically present on earth, the whole world would have perished. Anyone who fails to receive these teachings has already perished, because it is only His teachings that gives man salvation. Christ has made it clear to us in His statement in Matthew 24, 26-27 that, Wherefore, if they shall say to you, Behold, He is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, He is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out the east, and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. These words are now fulfilled. He is always with you. Therefore, one does not need to look for Him. He is with you in your house. He goes along with you anywhere you go. He always guides and directs you. We are all witnesses to His manifestation and mighty works. Now there is neither man nor woman, old or young, poor or rich, for we are all one in Him. Therefore, whoever receives His teachings shall be given the right of sonship and shall be called His begotten. But as many as reject His teachings shall be destroyed with a sword. Do not deceive yourself by saying that you had already known God, for it is only those who practice His teachings that will be saved. It is only then that His words, that there shall be only one sheepfold and one shepherd, come to fulfillment. Everything belongs to Him, and what belongs to Him equally belongs to us. Beloved, I do not intend to take you any further. A stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. Let he who has ears hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the world. May the Lord bless His holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu Compiled by George Morales